Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're honored to be with our next guest, Jill McMillan Palm, Executive Director of the Arts and Business Council of Greater Nashville. How are you doing, Jill? I'm terrific, Jeremy. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So you do so much, not only with the support of the arts and and that growth and development really around economic development as well and working with nonprofits and corporations. You do a lot. So let's dive in a little bit on just some context. Give us a little bit of history. Let's start there. Absolutely. So as our name implies, the Arts and Business Council, we have a pretty broad mission of sustaining the creative community here in the greater Nashville region by working with artists, arts organizations, creative businesses, and for-profit corporations that are interested in supporting the arts um, because we all know that a thriving arts community lends itself to an overall healthier community for everybody. You can retain better talent in your companies and get all of those really wonderful benefits that the arts provide. So what we do um, with that mission, all of our programs really are focused on sustaining and retaining artistic talent here in the region. So we provide business entrepreneurship training to artists, and we also train business folks in nonprofit best practices and how to engage with arts organizations so we can strengthen the arts infrastructure here in greater Nashville. I think that is something that um, artists pursue a passion and obviously they have the skill set, but to teach them the business side so that they can turn it into a thriving business. That's one of the biggest keys for success when you talk about artists and making that transition to business. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And our most popular programs definitely fit within that bucket. So our longest standing program is called Volunteer Lawyers and Professionals for the Arts. And through that program, we provide pro bono legal and business assistance to artists for their arts related endeavors. So, you know, we have songwriters moving to Nashville, they're getting handed a contract, they're so excited, they're making it in the music industry, and they have no idea what it means. So that's why we exist. Um, We can help them with some volunteer attorneys, we have about 300 attorneys across the state that volunteer with us um, to handle all sorts of contract reviews, intellectual property questions, nonprofit formation for new arts organizations, anything arts related, we can probably help you out with as long as you live in the state of Tennessee. And then the other thing we do related to business education for artists, we have a suite of education programs. Anything from kind of drop-in, 101 level monthly seminars where people can just hop on a webinar for an hour at a time and learn about interesting topics in the creative industries, Uh, We have an annual professional development conference in the fall. That's a day long. It's called Creative Exchange, and that is for artists and arts administrators looking to expand their networks and learn best practices and newest trends here in Nashville about the arts. And then our kind of masterclass level education program is our annual Periscope Artist Entrepreneur Training Program. It's application-based, and uh, it's a cohort of 25 artists each year that we lead through an intensive business development curriculum to help them build out their business plans and really treat it as a creative CEO of their own endeavor, Um, because it's really hard for artists to think of themselves as small business owners and their creative practice as an actual business. So we like to turn that model on its head and say, no, You are a CEO of your career, and we're going to teach you how to run an effective business. So we do that business development curriculum. We match them up one-on-one with a really high-level business mentor. And then we have a super fun pitch competition in the fall each year that kind of celebrates and wraps up that program where they get to pitch their business to the public and compete for some cash funding to seed those businesses. Give us an illustration. I have to use the word illustration. Sure. Give us an illustration. We talk about the scope and the diversity of artists, because I think it's one thing, as you mentioned, the songwriters, obviously Mm -hmm. that's a a mainstay for Nashville, painters, sculptors, but arts goes so much more broad. So give us an idea when you talk about the scope of artists that you work with, what does that look like? Exactly. So I'm so glad you asked that question because our definition of the creative economy and the arts is pretty broad. So you have your traditional fine arts, visual, music, theater, dance. And then beyond that, you have a lot of these new forms of media arts, technology arts, culinary art, fashion, makeup, hair design, 
film, entertainment, all of these things that, especially throughout this last, you know, 16, 18 months of the pandemic, we've learned, you know, we can survive without streaming services and all the content and the cool live stream concerts. We include all of that in our definition of artists, um, illustrators, graphic designers, all of those folks can come to us for support and help. Yeah, I mean, that paints such a beautiful picture of the tapestry of all the different opportunities when you talk about the arts. And mm -hmm. to your point, all of those play a vital role in the economic development of the community as well. So yeah, I love it. Absolutely. I also like that you focus on training in terms of equipping them to be successful board members. I think there's a mm -hmm. piece of that that's really neat as well. Talk about some of those nuances. Sure. So one thing we've learned, especially with emerging arts organizations, nonprofit organizations, and kind of those mid-tier organizations, is that it can be very difficult to expand their network of donors, get really well-trained board members, and strengthen that operational infrastructure that allows them to be out in the community performing the service that they've um, created their organization to serve. So we started a program several years ago, back in 2014, looking specifically at strengthening the infrastructure for arts nonprofits here in the region. And we found that the best way we could do that, um, both as a strengthening exercise, but also a diversity exercise, is to work with businesses that were supportive of the arts, but didn't understand how to get their folks onto boards or into the community, or they knew how to do that, but the folks they were sending didn't really know what they were getting into. So we wanted to be that conduit to say, we can get you directly linked up to the board organizations. And we're going to also make sure you're prepared to serve once you're on that board. So our arts board matching program started, like I said, in 2014. And that's another application based program where we're looking at folks that have kind of an inherent passion for the arts already, but may not know how to get involved or know exactly where they want to serve. And we walk them through a four workshop curriculum about nonprofit board best practices, fiduciary responsibility, governance, strategic planning, all of that stuff that all of a sudden you get on a board and you're like, wait, I'm responsible for all these things. I thought I was just here to meet people and, you know, support this organization and, you know, champion the work that they're doing. But it's so much more than that. And we want people to understand that board service is really another job. It's not just something you put on your resume. And so um, what's special about our program is that we're the only board training program in the region that we know of that um, specifically matches people to arts organizations. So we do the four workshops um, and it includes a really deep dive into the landscape here, what's different about arts nonprofits that may be different than um, social service nonprofits or other places where they may have served. And then in the fifth session, we do a really fun speed dating event um, for all of the organizations that are looking for new board members. So we take some survey data from our participants, we take some survey data from the organizations, try to max, match folks up one on one based on their financial commitment that they're able to make, the time commitment they're able to make, so we can um, make sure that the folks we're putting together are going to be successful in those matches. So over the last um, six or seven years, we've had about a 92, 93% match rate of all of our participants, which is really great. And about 60 to 65% of those folks that do get matched end up serving an additional term or becoming leaders on those nonprofit boards of where they get placed. So these are definitely folks that are ready to jump in and can build new connections for these arts organizations and end up having a really long-term impact on their operations. So we're really proud of that. And it's been very, very neat to see some of these folks come through our programs and then really dive in and make a huge impact on other arts organizations that we serve. Yeah, that, that's an awesome stat in terms of the success of it. And it's a lot of work. I mean, for listeners to, to understand when you look at being the matchmaker, but then training and equipping them, like you said, it's one thing to say, mm -hmm. hey, I want to serve, but it's another to equip them so they know how to serve and, and then to align kind of their passion and purpose with those different nonprofits. It takes a lot of effort, but the end result is it creates a real ripple effect in terms of what they're able to do to help the nonprofits thrive. And like you said, long term. So it's not just stepping in for one year. It's usually a three, three year term or more. Sometimes when you look at kind of the, the next layer. So really cool. How do you look at success? Because 
you know, already you're kind of mentioning some stats that are, are impressive, but what are the stats? What are the other percentages? What, what sort of things are you looking at that help measure success on your end? Yes, that's a really interesting question because I think it varies from program to program and initiative to initiative. But what we're looking at at the end of the day, um, like I kind of mentioned before, the ethos of our organization about keeping artists here in Nashville and keeping it a vibrant creative community. So every two years we put out a creative economy survey that kind of looks at a lot of this data that we track in so far as the number of artists that are living and working here in the region, um, the reasons that they have for staying here, not staying here, any challenges they're facing. And so we've gotten into a space where we're working with the city, working with the CBC and a lot of advocacy organizations around how we can better support artists holistically, not just necessarily in their creative careers, but with affordable housing and transit and all of those other things that make living in a city worthwhile. So um, success for us, it can be as simple as somebody going through our Periscope program and saying, hey, I wanna make the transition from part-time artistic work to a full-time creative career and being able to support myself or my family on those wages from my artistic work. Or it can be a much larger initiative to say, hey, you know, we wanna develop this incredible partnership that's getting 500 artists paid through a statewide partnership with some department. And so we're really looking at a lot of different metrics about sustainability, the diversity of our artist community and the growth of our artist community over time, and then also the reduction of barriers for people to have creative careers. So some of them qualitative, some of them quantitative. We have a lot of data coming into our organization year over year. I think that creative economy surveys like 200 questions. So it's amazing that we get as many responses as we do to that, but we comb, th that's why it takes us two years to comb through that data. <laughs> we only do it every two years because it's a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but when you have that many programs and you have that many touch points, that's what's going to happen in a good way. Mm -hmm. What's something that you've learned that you would pass along as encouragement to other communities when it comes to the work you do to support the arts and tying all of these different pieces together, but ultimately the impact it can create on an economy, on a community. So what's, I know it's hard to distill it down into one lesson, but just what's, what's some lesson that you've learned that you would offer up as words of encouragement to another community that's trying to embrace the arts and fuel that fire? Yeah, absolutely. I think my advice or my learning is twofold in that one, you can start small. It, you don't have to have fully formed programs or an annualized entrepreneur training program or, you know, a really robust volunteer program with 300 volunteers, you know, working to make sure artists get what they need. It can be one on one mentorship. It can be one on one opportunities to help artists grow and thrive. Our organization has been around since 2006. So we've had that many years to build all of these programs. I think we're up to six or seven core programs now that we run annually. And so the first piece of advice is just to start. And I think that rings true, whether it's an arts organization, whether it's anything, I'm sure, um, you know, startup business, anything in between, it's just to start and have the conversations with people that can help you get where you're going. The second piece of advice that I think, or the learning um, that I think I knew intrinsically, but didn't really put into practice before coming into my role as the head of the Arts and Business Council, is that artists are so underutilized in solving complex civic and social challenges. We've had a lot of really great opportunities to partner with the Tennessee Department of Health or um, the Nashville Soccer Club or a lot of these really interesting non-arts organizations to hire artists to solve challenges that they're having within their own organizations. And artists are kind of, arts and artists are kind of seen as nice to have, you know, that art is really pretty, that film was really great, but the creativity and the problem, creative problem solving that artists are able to do is largely different than what a lot of non-arts folks are trained to do. And that's why I think a lot of companies now look at solutions like design thinking or other ways of kind of corporate innovation that really stem from the creative fields. And so thinking more 
broadly about how you can get artists involved in your organization to maybe solve challenges that you're facing. And we're actually starting a program to do that and help companies do that, um, which I think is really fun. We used to do a program and we're bringing it back. And I'm going to apologize. They just started mowing the lawn next to me. So if you hear that buzz in the background, that's what that is. Um, but we started a program called Creative Advantage. And so what this program does is it brings artists into the workplace to unlock your company's competitive advantage. And so that can be something like if you're having a challenge with corporate culture and you have some new leadership and want to build trust among your team, mem team members and build collegiality, we can bring in a team to do improv training but they're not just doing that improv workshop. We're also pairing them with a business facilitator to talk about how they can take those tenants in improv theater back to their day-to-day -day work, day -day work in communicating with their teams or communicating with clients. As another example, we work with a songwriter who does um, kind of a metaphor between songwriting and innovation. And how do you use the seven steps of writing a good hit song to innovate? in your company. And so there are these really cool bite-sized workshops that we can do with companies that use design thinking or creative problem solving to solve those day-to-day -day challenges that you're having in your company. So that's something we're really excited about. We're piloting some programs now and hoping to launch that fully in 2022 at some point when we're able to convene in person, but we've been doing it over Zoom and they've worked pretty well too. Yeah, very creative and very smart on your end. Thank you. Um, share because you do have a number of opportunities for the public to come in and be a part of events. And you have volunteer opportunities, obviously, with the board placement. So there's a lot of ways that people can get involved in what you do. But talk about how the community can help. Absolutely. Several, several ways that people can get involved with the Arts and Business Council. The first is through that volunteer lawyers and professionals for the arts program. By the name of that program, it is Lawyers and Professionals. So if you're an attorney with a specific practice area that you'd like to lend your expertise, we love that. We also have several professionals in marketing, human resources, information technology, finance, accounting, that can volunteer for cases um, or issues that people come to us with that they just need a quick consultation, 30 minutes or less, or an email just answering their question. So that's the first way. Uh, the second way uh, is if you are a company leader or you're at a company where you have a critical mass of employees that it's important for them to get on nonprofit boards, that arts board matching program is an excellent way to not only help the arts community, but to have your company's employees build their professional networks and um, meet people in other sectors that they may not otherwise interface with and build their own professional capacity as leaders in your own organization. So there's kind of a twofold benefit to that program that we really love. Um, the third, you can bring a creative advantage program into your company. Um, we're always looking for pilot partners to test new workshops, um, whether that's corporate communication, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We'd love to bring artists to your workplace to help you solve those challenges. Um, and then we also have some super fun fundraisers and special events throughout the year that we would love for you to come and party with us. They all include, you know, really great local food and drink because culinary arts is super important to our creative community. And so they also feature performances from local artists um, and a lot of really fun interactive creative activities. So the first one we have coming up is our fall fundraiser. It's called the Nash Art Bash the very first one this year in 2021 and that'll be on Friday October 1st here in Nashville and then uh, we have our spring fundraiser usually in April or May called Arts Immersion and so they're both really great fun cocktail parties very creative very fun um, and supports you know goes all back into our programs that support the creative community, particularly that volunteer lawyers program. Since it's free, it's pro bono. We don't make any money on that program. So we always are looking for support with that as well. Wrap up with contact information, your website, where do we go to see the calendar of events, all the opportunities to plug in and just learn more about the organization as well. Yes. So if you want to get involved or learn more about our upcoming programs, you can visit us online. Our website is abcnashville.org. And then all of our social media handles are pretty much the same way. 
ABC Nashville, except for Instagram, which is ABC underscore Nashville. Um, but otherwise, if you want to send us a quick note, you can do that through our website or our general email address is info, I-N-F-O at abcnashville.org. And we'd love to hear from you. Well, Jill, greatly appreciate all you and your amazing team do. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. This was terrific.